So last session we talked about dropout and then we moved on to network in network. So for network in network, we said that this was the first work that started to introduce one by one, started to use and introduced one by one convolutions. And now they're really popular. And many people after that paper are using one by one convolution in their works for various reasons. But these guys wanted to have a network inside their network and they wanted to do fully connected. And at that time, after writing the paper or during writing it, they noticed that multi-layer perceptrons, if you put them after your convolutions are just gonna end up being one by one convolutions. They also introduced global average pooling and they replaced the last layer, if you remember from AlexNet, the last couple of layers were fully connected. They said, you don't need to do that. You can just uh, average your pixel values per channel. And those are gonna give you your vector, the one that you want to work with in the end and use it for classification purposes. The cool thing about global average pooling is that now your entire structure is independent of the resolution of the input image. The convolutions are local and you're just shifting it over your image and they don't depend on the size of the input image. The filters, they have their own sizes, they share parameters. And in the end, the problem was the fully connected layers. For the fully connected layers, you needed to have a specific size so that once you flatten it, you end up with, uh, I don't know, 200, 2048 dimensions. So the problem was at the last layers, global average pooling is gonna take care of that. Any questions about one by one convolutions and global average pooling? Is everything clear? It seems to me like a one by one convolution is just taking a matrix and scaling by a constant. Or how is it different than that? So one by one convolutions, I introduced them uh, I think in the second or the third session of our class. So this is a one by one convolution. Each image or each input is gonna be a tensor. It's gonna have a height and width. These are your pixels. And it's gonna be the number of channels. That's the input to one by one convolution. The output is gonna be having the same number of pixels, but different number of channels. F. Got it. So now it's just a matrix multiplication okay. to go from dimension C to dimension F. Got it. Thank but you. But being done point wise. Any other questions? The question is for the global pooling, does it have to be average pooling or could it be max pooling? Uh, for the final layer, it has to be global average pooling because it's a global operation. If you find the maximum value of your channel, you're losing a lot of information. When you're doing max pooling uh, and you're doing it over small window, that's fine. It's not gonna uh, end up destroying too many, too much information. But when you are doing it globally, I would recommend using averaging. Does that answer your question? Any other questions? So they report some results on CIFAR 10. CIFAR 10 images are low resolution. They are 32 by 32. And you have 10 classes in the end. This max out paper, I would recommend reading it. And these are the results of network in network plus dropout and they are getting 10.41% error rate. So data augmentation, I think we are gonna be able to cover it today in one other paper. 
But if you add it to most of these methods, the test error rate is gonna go down, including network in network. CIFAR 100 is similar to CIFAR 10, but it has 100 classes rather than 10. And you can imagine the more classes you have, the harder the task is. If you have only two classes, and if you have a coin that you toss it, your error rate is gonna be 50%. 50% of the time you're gonna be correct. If you have 10 classes, then your error rate of a coin flip, of a 10-sided coin, is gonna be 110. It's gonna be, for C410, it's gonna be 1100. Basically 1% 1 of the time you're gonna be correct by random. And if you have 1000 classes like ImageNet, that's a harder task. So, and again, these papers are good reading material. Learn pooling, stochastic pooling, cons max. And if you don't know what these numbers are, you can refer to the paper. I'm taking that table from that paper. And then it's reference 16 of the paper down here. There is street view house numbers. And drop connect is actually the one that's winning on this data set and network in network is here. The other one is MNIST. So usually these are the data sets that are a smaller size compared to ImageNet. And if you're developing a method and you want to try out your ideas, you're gonna try out your ideas on a smaller data set because now your networks are gonna be smaller and then you get your results faster. But then once you're happy with your ideas, you test it on ImageNet. I mentioned that global average pooling, you can compare it to fully connected layers. You can actually use it to replace them. And uh, it has a nice effect. You can actually use it to regularize your neural network. It is even do It is doing even better than when you have dropout in your fully connected layers. So replace your fully connected layers with dropout and dropout with global average pooling. And you can see that your error rate is going down on the test data. So it's helping your method not overfit. So it has a regularization effect as well. Not only it allows you to have uh, different resolution for your input images, it also regularizes your method, your neural network. Any questions before I move to the next topic? <laughs>